اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین بار الخلائق اجمعین باعث الانبیاء والمرسلین ثم الصلاة والسلام على شرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین شفیع المذنبین حبیب الہ العالمین ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد اللہم صلی علی محمد و آلی محمد و علی آلی بیتہ الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین و لعنت اللہ علی عدائہم اجمعین من یوم عداوتہم الی یوم الدین اما بعد فقد قال اللہ عز و جل فی کتابه الحکیم و هو اصدق القائلین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولقد ارسلنا الى امم من قبلك فأخذناهم بالبأساء والضراء لعلهم يتضرعون آمنا باللہ صدق اللہ العلی العظیم اللہم صلی علی محمد محمد السلام علیکم جمیعا و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Today we're going to be looking at a set of verses from the Holy Quran, from Surah Al-An'am, the sixth surah of the Holy Quran, verses 42 to 45, to do a little bit of a tafsir for the sake of barakah, inshaAllah. Uh, you can get out your gadgets, but I believe it will come on the bottom of the screen. But if you would like to follow through uh, with us, again, is Surah Al-An'am, the sixth surah of the Holy Quran, verses 42 to 45. In these verses, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is addressing the polytheists um, and those who have strayed from the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want them to be on. And so it's a message to them to look back at the previous communities that came before them to describe to them how Allah treated them and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with the community of the past or communities of the past that had strayed from the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to be on. Um, and naturally this message resonates for all generations and times, right? And so the message that we will try to extrapolate inshallah at the end is that how do we take this message and this methodology that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses uh, when He is trying to awaken a community because that's what He wanted. This was not, an, this was not just a threat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one can call it that. But at the same time, it was a message that he wanted to give to these people to say, look, I've done this before, I can do it again, wake up now before it's too late. And that's the message for us today, that this is something that we've seen in the past take place. And we are not immune from that simply because we haven't seen something like that for the last 1400 years because of the Rahmah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So the verses here begin in verse 42 that we are discussing. Allah Azza wa Jal begins these verses. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. He says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمٍ مِّن قَبْلِكَ That indeed we sent messengers to communities before you. Um, the address is to the Prophet for the people at that time to hear that the communities that came prior um, it could be many generations prior, it could be centuries prior, but what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say is that I sent messengers to those communities. So it's not that I destroyed communities without giving them any guidance. Rather Allah makes it very clear, I sent messengers to these communities. And the aim of the messengers was to guide is to nurture and to try to really awaken and uplift the society out of the darkness and bring them into light. This is what every messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tried to do. However, the preaching and the teaching of these messengers fell on deaf ears, right? And as we've seen 
in every nation that has talked about in the past in the Quran, very few people have awoken to the message of the messengers that were sent. And so these people continued down their vicious way. They didn't stop what they were doing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues and He says, فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ He says that then we seized them with stress and distress. Ba'asa and Darra. We will describe these words. These two come together often in the Holy Quran. Ba'asa and Darra from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he says that we seized them. Yeah, that we took them um, and they were afflicted with Ba'asa and Darra. With what purpose though? La'allahum yatadarra'un. So that they would humble themselves to Allah. So what is Ba'asa and Darra? Right, And so the first thing I want us to recognize is the shift in methodology by God. Right, So the first methodology used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to send messengers. He said, I am sending messengers. That's like rahmah from God. Right, It's a form of mercy from Allah that He's guiding people. He doesn't want them to ever say that you didn't send us a guide. And so He says, I sent them guides. And I sent them guides and nothing happened. They continued down their vicious way. Then Allah switches the methodology, right? He sends down then Ba'asa and Darra. What's important for us to understand here is that this Ba'asa and this Darra. So first of all, what is it? Ba'asa is considered to be external forms of hardship, right? So these are things outside the human being. So for example, things like stress, poverty, lack of agriculture, disease, death, etc. These are forms of Ba'asa. Allah says, I tried them and I tested them and I sent down these different forms um, towards them. So these are things that happened to them. They may have been rich, they went to poverty. They may have had land and the land became rotten. Whatever it is, Allah says that I sent Ba'asa upon them. And the second is Darra. Darra is internal forms of hardship. Right? And this could be things like distress, sadness, grief, ignorance. All of these, the ulama say, are forms of darra. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I sent ba'asa and darra. But what's really important, that the mufassireen emphasize here, that these were not punishments from Allah. Yeah? We think they are punishments from God, but they were not punishments. Allah says, this is my methodology. Right? I seized them with Ba'asa and Darra. Why? So that they awaken. Yeah? Again, a form of Rahma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's amazing how God sees these things, right? We see lack of agriculture, we see death, we see disease, and we're like, man, God hates us. But Allah is saying, maybe I'm trying to awaken you. Yeah? Because it's only during hardships that we think that maybe we're doing something wrong here, right? Like we've always given this example, like when do we remember God? It's not when things go well, right? We remember God when things don't go so well, right? Like again, I always tell my, myself this and I tell my kids this, you know, like when every time we turn on the light, we'll be like, we don't say Alhamdulillah, light turned on, Alhamdulillah, you know? But the day power goes out, we're like, what's going on, right? We think of God at that moment, but the days when everything was fine, how often do we think of God? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down Ba'asa and Darra upon these communities of the past so that they would awaken. But unfortunately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in verse 43, they did not awaken, right? As do most people who are set in their ways, they don't awaken, no matter what transpires. And they continued in their acts of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا He says, if only when our ba'sa came upon them, if they had just humbled themselves. There's a translation, it depends on how we read it. I know how... When I was reading the translations, one of the translations said, then why when our punishments came to them, did they not awaken? However, a lot of other translations don't call it punishment, right? Because it's not a punishment, right? Again, this was a form of suffering, yes. But the aim of the suffering was not to punish the people, but was to awaken the people. So what Allah is saying that why when I made you suffer, did you not awaken? It would have been so easier, it would have stopped at that particular point if you just awoke 
and you did the things that I wanted you to do. Allah says that there are two reasons why these people did not awaken. Right? Again, it's part of the verses. What is the first reason? Walakin qasat qulubuhum. The first reason that they did not awaken is because their hearts were already hard. Yeah, or their hearts were hardened. The reason why hearts harden um, are many, but nothing hardens the heart like sin. Right? Sin and perpetual and consistent sinning makes the heart unpenetrable. Yeah? And it is something that causes people to become even more firm in their particular course of action. Right? And so these people, because of their hearts being hardened, because of their sinning, because of their arrogance, because of so many different factors, right? they were highly successful people. Right? They were well-to-do. Um, and so when these things happened, they didn't look at that to say, man, something's wrong. They just said, oh, we're going to keep trying. We're going to keep going. Right? And so the first reason Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts were hardened. Again, like, yeah, like, we got to look at ourselves, right? And there are signs of heart hardening, right? Um, like, do messages have an impact on me, right? Like, when I hear these type of messages from God, because this is really God saying these things, right? And if they just deflect off me, I think that's a really a sign of something that needs to be worked on, to be quite honest, right? But the second reason Allah says, وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ and that shaitan made decorous for them. It made it joyful to them that which they were doing. Right? And again, this happens all the time. Right? These two tricks of shaitan are not just for that zaman. But this happens in our day and age as well. That man, I was successful. Why can't I just continue in this way? Right? Shaitan tricks us in this way. Right? Um, you know, I had someone tell me, and again... They might be listening, but you know, like it was, it was a. I don't think it was an arrogant comment, you know. Um, but he said, you know, like I listened to music when I was growing up, and I turned out fine. So what's the big deal if my kids listen to music, right? Um, and that's what zayyana lahum shaytan wa amalahum, right? God talks about this in the Quran, that Allah made their actions seem decorous for them, right? Man, I tell all of us this, right? That if I, if I, for example, lived a sinful life and then by the grace of God I woke up, that does not mean that my kids can follow a similar path and they too will wake up. Yeah? There was the hand of God there, hand of God that saved us, right? And who's to say that God said, man, I already showed you my hand once. Why should I show it to you again, right? The mercy of God, you know, it comes in ways and it reaches us all the time but when we are blessed with special mercy then we better act on that mercy because that's a form of awakening God is trying to tell us but then if we repeat that same mistake there's no chance that that mercy comes in right and so we have to be very careful about these things and shaitan does this right um, you know like if somebody for example had a particular manhaj a particular way in which they did business and they were successful even though they were cutting corners if they hit a hard patch they're not going to say maybe i should stop cutting corners right what's shaitan going to do shaitan's going to tell them man you were successful for 20 years it's a hard patch you'll get over it continue right and that's the mentality right that man you were doing wrong but you were successful you were happy Keep trying, the happiness will come back. And this is how shaitan plays with us, right? And these are the ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that their hearts continue to harden and they ignored my messages. When these difficulties and hardships did not have an effect on these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now changes the methodology a third time. Look at how great God is. Yeah, honestly, that... I don't think we as parents do that, even though we love our children so much. That man, I told you once, I, I'll forgive you. I'm telling you twice. I'm not sure I'm going to forgive you now. Yeah? God, for, God says, I'm going to give you a third chance. Right? And so now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the methodology a third time. And we see in Surah Al-An'am, 
verse 44 falamma nasu ma dhukiru bihi fatahna alayhim abwaba kull shay he says that then when our when they forgot that by which they were reminded we opened to them every door of goodness yeah now this is interpreted in two ways by mufassirun is very interesting if you read for example Allama Tabatabai in Al-Mizan rahimahullah he says the following he says that Allah recognize that these people would not change now right and so he says that now he opened for them every door of blessing so remember these people had blessings these people's blessings were taken away as a form of test to them now he says that every form of blessing is now open for them again they had wealth children physical health uh comfort abundance security prestige all of these things were once again given to them with the hope of god that these people would now forget about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right allama tabatabai says that this was a form of punishment right that now allah is saying i've done it i've done enough i've given you enough this is over right so now allah gives them so much because the reality is is that it's in abundance that generally human beings will forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right when things are really good we tend to not appreciate what god has given us as much and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now opens up these doors of grace for them until they became once again proud of themselves they became happy with the state that they were in and allah ends this verse and he says what hatta idha farihu bima utu he says until they were rejoiced in what they were given akhadnahum baghtatan fa idha hum mublisun that allah says i took them and seized them suddenly and they were there in a state of despair yeah that now they were in a state of panic because now my azab had come down upon them this way of dealing with people right um who transgress has a specific terminology it's known as istidraj yeah istidraj um means that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is slowly and slowly letting evil doers and those who transgress feel secure in their transgression and then the punishment comes all of a sudden right it's because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them every opportunity now every opportunity to do good every opportunity to change and so when we look at this example like these are not small events these were events that transpired for a good period of time right enough enough awakening moments were given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the concept of istidraj is mentioned in surah al-a'raf verses 182 and 183 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says walladhina kadhabu bi ayatina those who lied about our signs and were and were consistent or denying our signs so nastadrijuhum min haythu la ya'lamun he says yeah he says that we will progressively lead them to destruction from when they didn't were from where they did not even know right they were going down a path of absolute destruction but they were just happy it's rowing the boat not realizing that there is a fall right ahead of them right and they were just going but allah says this is how i do it for them right it's not that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says tomorrow azab no like you're going to gradually get there and you realize man what a waste of a life that i have led that's the first interpretation what's interesting is that if you look at tafsir al amthal of aitul nas makaram shirazi hafizahullah he says that these opening of blessings from allah were not a punishment yeah rather there was another form of methodology where now god said let me send you blessings so that you will appreciate me yeah because again one of the signs of how to connect to god if you study theology when we say why should mankind study theology or study religion one of the reasons they say shukr al munim to do shukr to the one who provides for you yeah that instinctively mankind has a desire to know who has been kind to them who has done a favor upon them why so they can thank them right we want to thank people for their kindness where allah has done so much kindness for us and so he says that this was actually a form of mercy 
from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A third methodology, right? Where first messengers were sent, then hardships came, and now ease came again. Allah says, look, I removed your hardships for you. Come, remember me. But again, Allah says, But again, they did not awaken. But what they did was they became proud. Yeah, of what they had been given or what they had accomplished. And then Allah says, أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَةً فَإِذَاهُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ And I took them, um, when, and they went from, I took them in a way that they could not even recognize or, and they fell into a state of despair. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Now, right? We get to like my favorite verse here, right? Because these people failed to awaken, right? Um, from all of these different forms of guidance that were sent. So the first obviously is intrinsic guidance. Like we know right from wrong. And then messengers. And then difficulties. And then ease. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in turn because of everything that was done Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I eliminated these people but the way he says it is very beautiful yeah if you look at An'am 45 what does Allah say فَقُطِعَ دَابِرُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ ah yeah ah yeah that's like a boss, yeah? That's like how a boss sounds, you know what I mean? Like, like very mafioso the way God said it. Yeah, he says that I eliminated them. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Like I did not care. Yeah, like there's nothing they could have done about it. There's no one can compete with me. And that's the power of God, yeah? That's the power of God. That no one can challenge him. That when He has given us all of these things, when He has given us all of these signs, and yet when we fail to accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says, فَقُطِعَ دَابِرُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا This قُطِعَ دَابِرُ الَّذِينَ قَوْمِ الظَّلَمُوا refers to an absolute destruction of these people. Yeah, it's an absolute annihilation of these people where there are no signs left of them whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically wiped them off this earth. Yeah, and they were gone. And then the, the, the end is, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I tell you, that's so powerful, you know, because why after just saying all of these things he did, and then the fact that he says he destroyed them. That God uses this beautiful phrase, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And all praise belongs to the Lord of the world. I'll read for you what Allah Matabatabai says in Al Mizan, yeah, for us to try to understand why Allah uses this. He says, and I'm quoting him now, he says, the description in this verse of their characteristic of injustice and the Almighty's praise for his lordship proves that the blame and the calamity of what came upon them in form of devastating punishment stems from themselves since they were the people who committed injustice and that nothing can be attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for good praise since he did not do anything in the handling of their affair except based on profound wisdom yeah? that means that Allah is not only punishing them but Allah is distancing themselves entirely yeah he says that whatever came to them in the form of punishment in the form of annihilation was due to their own hands while I am pure in all of this walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen yeah that I had absolutely nothing to be blamed for this in other words I gave them every opportunity I think it's a very interesting set of verses well, let's come back to us then, right? That when you look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with communities who have transgressed, there's a methodology that God is describing here. When you look at that methodology, and then you look at what does God want from that methodology, God wants an awakening. Yeah? The aim is for us to awaken and say, man, I can be a better servant of God. 
it doesn't matter how good we think we are we can be better servants of God right and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see from us is whether or not we're going to try to awaken to become a better version of ourselves and so when you look at this methodology um, like I think we're in that third stage to be quite honest yeah where number one messengers have been sent to us none of us can say messengers haven't come we have accepted the message and the message is something that we claim to follow we have lived and constantly live under many many different forms of ba'asa and darra yeah we see came coming out of a pandemic not even far away but coming out of a pandemic war hardships poverty illness everywhere around the world yeah it's not just that we don't experience it so we're not going to ba'asa it's better that we feel the pain before we go through that ba'asa right but ba'asa and darra is felt throughout the world today and at the same time look at the flow of god's blessings upon us yeah especially for us yeah, living here we all have some form of darra internal grief maybe some of us have ba'asa external difficulties but at the same time we are engulfed yeah in the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala engulfed in it i don't think any of us can deny it yeah if it doesn't matter what financial state you're in the fact that we have security here and safety that is more than enough to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah when we see what's happening in different parts of the world we have been blessed we live at a time and age where the technological advancements have reached such a stage where hard to imagine how things can get better i'm sure they can right but the point is that all three of these methodologies have been shown to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all god wants is an awakening and this is a point that i want us to remind ourselves of yeah that the istidraj of god the the movement of god that happens through these flows are taking us down a path and when the end comes there's not going to be an expiry clock to let us know the end is coming right but the end can come at any time for any one of us what allah wants from us is an awakening right and inshallah we take that opportunity to learn from these communities of the past so that we too can become better servants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad we end with a few words of masaib when we talk of an awakening naturally in karbala we see one of the most important beautiful examples of this awakening in hur ibn yazid al riyahi we say salam to hur who found that awakening right on time so that he would be saved in that world and in the hereafter but that awakening of hur was not arbitrary there was something in the heart of hur that made god pleased to give him that awakening and that's our job our job is to make sure that there is still some light left in our hearts so that an awakening can transpire and when we look at the life of hur that which he had in his heart was the admiration and love for fatima to zahra alayhi salam that hur had this absolute respect for say the zahra that when he stopped the army of imam al hussein or the caravan of imam al hussein and when he refused to let the imam leave it is said he held on to the reins of the horse of the imam and the imam looked at him and he said ya hur sakalat ke ummak he says o oh, hur may your mother weep at your death o oh, hur this was a strong statement made by the imam but the jawab of hur tells us the personality of hur and he says to him o oh, hussein if any man had said such words about my mother i would have repeated these words back to him But he said what can i say about your mother Fatima az-Zahra 
where these words do not allow to come from my heart onto my tongue. Even on the day of Ashura, when the drums of the wars were beating and Hur began to ride towards Imam, as he was riding, he called out to God and says, Ya Allah, it is I who have placed the children of Fatima in this position. That, O oh my Lord, forgive me for what I have done. It was this love of Fatima, we say, O oh Hur, that when you fell on that battlefield, and when Imam placed his head on his lap, your head on his lap, the Imam did a favor for you on that day that was not given to anyone else. But he was given the handkerchief of Fatima alayhi salam to be wrapped on his head. That serves and that will serve as a crown on the day of judgment for the awakening that he had. فَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا عَيَّمٌ قَلَبِيًّا قَلِبُونَ وَالْآقِبَةٌ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the return of our Imam. We ask him to forgive the sins of our parents and loved ones for those going through difficulty that he end their difficulty. For those that have asked us to pray for them, Ya Allah, accept their hajat. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم رحم الله من كره سورة المباركة الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد الله